Welcome to the Newton tutorial series. I'm Mike Cruz with AC Tech and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up the cluster mesh settings for each of your clusters. So the cluster mesh basically allows us to take a cluster that looks like this, a series of spheres, and make it look like more of a, a nice kind of mesh factor. So if I open up a playback file here Let's go ahead and change our coloring. So we're color by cluster type. Let's turn on our mesh settings. Basically, actually, if instead, let's say, let's color it by dimension instead. Oh, 60 to 350. Okay. So you can see that when I'm looking at when I'm looking at my clusters in the simulation it's a lot easier to identify each specific cluster if I'm using this mesh so you know if I switch back to smooth spheres versus meshed certainly when I'm coloring them by dimension when I'm coloring them by cluster size you can tell even with the smooth you can kinda tell which clusters which but if I color them uniform you know, I have no idea where one cluster ends and the next one begins and in some cases that might be what you want because you can you know it, it gives the it, it gives the impression that you're using much much finer particles because uh, because you can see each specific sphere but other times you want to be able to see each specific lump so that's what the mesh does and and the the mesh factor is purely it's purely a visual effect when when Newton performs all the calculations it does it using the clusters using these these spheres but um, for the purposes of you know viewing the results or creating your animations it, it definitely it adds a visual appeal when you can when you can mesh up each cluster like this so let's go back to our cluster creator So in order to preview what that mesh is going to look like, we just go to uh, whichever cluster we want and we turn on the mesh right here. And that's going to show us, well, here's exactly what the mesh is going to look like if I run a simulation using using this cluster. And uh, what we have here is we have our mesh factor. So if I turn my mesh factor up, the the mesh tries to follow the contours of those spheres more closely. So if I turn that back down, I mean, if I turn it up incrementally, you can see basically it's kind of it, it's it's sucking itself in much closer and closer until eventually you're left with just a bunch of individual spheres. You know, and if I turn that down, the cluster is going to get much more bulbous and much more blobby. But the problem with a with a big cluster like this is, yeah, it looks nice and smooth, but you know, if I switch back and forth between mesh. And sphere, you can see. Uh, I mean, this this cluster is is sticking way out on the top. You know, it looks huge. And clearly, if I if I run a simulation with this lump and this is what my mesh is, then when that when that cluster is sitting in a chute or when it's sitting on a belt, it's going to be sticking through the bottom of the belt. I'm going to be seeing a whole bunch of clusters sticking through there. So the idea is, you want the mesh to to follow that the curvature of those spheres as tightly as possible. And the best way to do that is by taking and 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 only using the external spheres to generate that cluster. So if I go back to sphere mode and I turn on this show ignored, this is going to show me all the spheres that I'm ignoring for this mesh. Because by default when you create a new cluster um, and try and generate the mesh, Newton uses the entire cluster. It uses every sphere in the cluster to generate that mesh. But because there's um, such a high density of spheres in the middle you end up generally getting a mesh that looks very bulbous it kinda sticks out on the sides so let me show you what I mean if I just go ahead and create a new cluster make it 5 by 5 by 5 maybe a little bit more tightly grouped alright so we've got 125 spheres and let's go ahead and turn on our mesh and we haven't set up a mesh factor yet so let's see where that should be. Let's turn that up. Quality definitely needs to be increased so we get a good resolution. So that doesn't look too bad for a mesh. You can see however that that if I if I go to a side view this corner sphere is pretty small. You know the the original sphere is is this big, 
but when I generate the mesh, it wants to it wants to really shrink down that sphere, and that's because of all the clusters that are inside the center of all the spheres that are inside the center of this cluster. They're all kind of com trying to compress and contract the 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 um, the corners of the cluster. So if I try to you know if I try to make this bigger, if I expand it so that these corner spheres actually are pretty much the same size, what ends up happening? is in order to do that all the sides of the cluster get get um get rounded out and and the whole cluster ends up looking like a giant blob just because I'm I'm trying to get these corner spheres to show up. And so generally anytime you create a cluster that has more than, you know, 10 or 12 or 14 spheres, anytime you create a cluster that has internal spheres that you can't see from the outside, you just generally want to want to hide those. You want to hide those from the cluster. And again, hiding the spheres, it only applies to generating the mesh. It's only a visual effect. It has nothing to do with the way Newton will perform the calculations. So let's go ahead and do that. And if I want to hide a sphere, let's just go to our first sphere. Let's scroll back and forth. You can see, okay, this is this is how Newton generated those spheres. That's the way we generated the order of the spheres. And in order to hide a sphere, all you do is you right click and you go to ignore sphere for mesh. And that number turns gray and that's how you know that it's been ignored. The sphere is gray as well. In in order to to see these gray spheres, you have to check the show ignored. Otherwise, it just won't show you any of those spheres that have been ignored. So alternatively, rather than right clicking, you can simply go to that sphere and hit enter. And that will that will um that will switch it to, you know, ignored, it's not ignored. I hit enter again, it's ignored. Ignored. Just a quick way of doing that. So let's go through and just um hide all the internal spheres. Okay. All right. So if I'm going like this, I know the next one here is going to be an internal, and that one, and that one. This one here is going to be a top sphere. And if I go to the next one, we're at the bottom of the next row. So we want to hide this one, this one, this one. And now we're at the top again. So I'm just going to go through and hide all of these really quick. All right, so now all those spheres on the inside. If I go to wireframe, you can see it's it's pretty gray in the middle. All those spheres are gray. They're all they're all being ignored for the purposes of creating the mesh. Now, if I go ahead and let's turn that mesh back on. Now, if I want to make this a little bit more tight, so that we can kind of see the the definition there. Okay. Now, when I go ahead and and turn the mesh on and off, you see we're still kind of shrinking down these corner spheres, aren't we? Certainly the mesh does not look as 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 um, bulbous on the sides. It's not sticking out nearly as far as it was before, but it still could be improved. Maybe you look at this and you say, oh, well, this, you know what? This mesh is good enough for me. That's fine. That, that'll be fine. And then that's perfectly fine. But uh, what you could also do is you could say, well, now why don't we take and hide some of the spheres on the face? So Let's, see if, let's go to this, uh, where's our first face here? Right here, okay. So what if we hide this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one? Turn my mesh back on. You can see we've we really shrunk down this face because we're. you can see we're missing those five spheres. So now take my mesh factor, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down some more. Wow, you know, that's actually looking really nice there. If I... If I go to this view here and I and I flip my mesh on and off, you can see that this face here doesn't really stick out much further than than the than the um, than the spheres themselves do. So this is following pretty tightly. So if I went went through each of these faces and did the same thing, then I I would end up creating a a mesh that that much better follows each of these spheres. So that's the idea, and uh, all these clusters that that have been included with um with this new version 2.25 we've already set up the mesh factor the mesh quality and the ignored spheres so that when you you can just go ahead and turn on the mesh and you see that it's looking pretty good it follows it pretty well and um and it doesn't stick out too far in it, on any of the surfaces let's go ahead and open up that playback file again So if I turn to, if I go to meshed, if this uh, this checkbox here 
this automatic checkbox basically says, do I want Newton to try to automatically calculate the mesh factor and the mesh quality? Or do I want to use the settings that are stored in that library, the original library that I used to run the simulation? So if it's unchecked, I'm going to be using all those settings that, that we set up for those clusters. But now if I go ahead and check it, basically when you check this, Newton treats the, the meshing like it did in the previous versions where it automatically set the mesh factor and the mesh quality. And it's going to do that using every single sphere. So you can see that, that because I'm let, letting Newton do it automatically, the sphere here is very, very bulbous. It's sticking out on the top and the bottom. And if this cluster was sitting on a belt, which I don't see any of them sticking on a belt there, do I? Maybe if I back up a little bit. Ah, can't quite get one. Anyway, but um, so now if I just go back and look at that again. Now let's switch it to those those settings that we've set up. Let it regenerate, and all of a sudden, yeah, now that's much flatter lump. So if I switch back and forth between you know the smooth and the meshed you can't see that there's a difference in size. It basically looks like the same cluster. It's just nice and meshed. So when, when Newton opens up an old playback file that was created with um, a, a version less than 2.25, it's going to automatically check this checkbox um, because it assumes, obviously, in those older versions, you didn't have the ability to set up the, the mesh factor. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to think you're going to want to automatically calculate it. Or if you're even if you're running newer simulations and you're using your custom clusters, but you haven't set up, you haven't set up mesh factors, you can still check automatic, and Newton will go ahead and and do it like it used to do with the mesh, where it automatically tries to calculate the mesh settings. But definitely, the the best mesh is going to be achieved by by actually going into the cluster creator and creating those meshes yourself. It's going to give you the best looking mesh. And as I mentioned, we've already set up all the meshes for all of these lumps and all of these clusters. So you can just go ahead and use them right in your particle set, and it will be just fine. The mesh will look will look as uh, about as good as it's going to get. So that covers, uh, I think that covers the, the meshing feature. And if you have any other questions about it, certainly feel free to send us an email at info at ac Thanks.